Hello and welcome to this brief video in which we'll be taking a look at the new SmartSign 2 software by Broadcast Radio. So let's take a look. The first thing you want to do is head over to the download site which is broadrad.com slash ss2 or you can head to the standard website broadcastradio.com select SmartSign 2 from the products list and you'll see that there's a link there to the free 30-day trial. So let's download and take a look. Once the site's loaded, click on download and this, the installation software will be downloaded to uh, your downloads folder or whichever folder you've set that to be done. Once the file's finished downloaded, you can open the downloads folder, double click on the installer and then click the install button. And that's SmartSign 2 installed. Um, now you can either license it if you've uh, purchased the SmartSign license software from our website. Uh, you'll be emailed the license immediately. If you haven't done that, you can also run the evaluation, which gives you 30 days free to try the software. So we'll do that. Okay, let's take a look. Here we can see the default layout for the smart sign. Um, you can see we've got a, a couple of uh, different clocks here. We've got uh, UK time, uh, time for Abu Dhabi, New York and Sydney. And we've got a bit of a title at the top there. And then we've got uh, three colored blocks, which are smart display panels. And we'll discuss them shortly. However, the first thing you need to know about smart sign two is how to move from the active smart sign into the layout and settings mode. So to do that, if you hover your mouse over the bottom right hand corner and click, you'll see you then get a layout and a close option. If you click layout, then it takes you back to the layout screen. Now the layout screen is used to define what is displayed on your smart site. So you can see here, if you remember the clock we had a few seconds ago, uh, we had a big digital clock and then we had three other clocks. We had three smart display panels and we had a text block. So each one of these is represented um, on the layout screen here. You can also see we've got some blank here effectively the way that the smart sign works is um, the layout is a grid of n rows and num and uh, columns and you can determine how many columns and rows you have and then each column and row can be a tile um, so this is a digital clock tile this is a text tile this one is a smart display tile and if we wanted to add a new tile let's say we wanted to add one here we can simply double click that will bring the list of available tiles we have. So let's briefly run through that list so you can see the things that we have available to add to our smart sign. We have an analog clock. Uh, this will be like a, a watch face or a clock face on a wall. We have a audio monitor tile. This works with the, um, the audio uh, audio monitoring software uh, that we have on our website, which is free for everyone to use. Um, and that would allow you to either monitor an, a sound card input or with some compatible mixing desks like the AEQ, the DNR um, webcaster and Airlight, um, you can actually have the audio monitor um, have that uh, mon uh, audio information um, natively brought in rather than going through a sound card but essentially an audio monitor gives you a pair of VU uh, some VUs on screen so you can have some confidence level monitoring on your smart sign. A date time tile is used for displaying the date and time in a, uh, a, a wide range of different formats you can configure the way that the date and time is displayed uh, to suit your uh, preference the space you have on the sign and also any regional variation in the way that dates are displayed. Then we have the digital clock. This is the clock that we saw a few moments ago on the smart sign. So a digital clock has a, a large digital clock in the center, can be set to, um, to 12 hours or 24 hours, and then has 60 um, dots around the outside. Uh, and each second, one of those dots fills in. So you get a kind of sweep 
going around each minute. So it makes it very useful for talking up to the top of um, a particular time, like top of the hour or something like that. Uh, we have a Google Analytics tile. This allows you to uh, to connect to your Google Analytics account and display um, an element. So it might be how many people are on your website in real time, how many visitors you've had today, that type of thing. We have an images tile. This can display either a single static image or it can also be set to display images in a folder in rotation. We have a media tile. Now this has a dual use. It's either for streaming video from either an online source or a local uh, video file, or it can also stream audio. So, and that includes uh, web uh, internet streams like a shoutcast or an icecast stream. So it may be that you use this for um, actually listening to your station output via a web stream if your smart sign is actually going in a reception or some other area like a um, engineering or, or production area where you, it's useful to be able to hear the station as well as see it. Um, you can also do um, streams from security cameras, that type of thing, using a media tile. The Myriad Logging Monitor tile allows you to connect to the Myriad Logging System if you have one at your station, and it will give you the status of the um, of the Myriad Logging uh, that you are running, the log that you're running, and also you can also display the latest metadata connect, uh, collected by the logging system. Uh, now playing information is uh, usually supplied from Myriad 5 uh, from OCP uh, or you can also do it from um, version 4 of OCP I believe as well and basically if you want to have a text a text of uh, what's currently playing artist and title then you can have that on your smart sign. RSS feeds allow you to uh, connect to uh, an RSS feed provider. So uh, commonly this would be some type of news provider, maybe BBC News or Sky News. Um, you just simply put in the RSS feed address and then the headlines are um, displayed on the smart zone. Smart display uh, tiles. Now these are the ones that would normally be used for tally information like uh, mic live, uh, telephone ringing, um, studio switching or which studio is on air, that type of thing. And essentially a smart display tile can respond to some type of external trigger. Now that could be a hardware input for, via the broadcast radio hardware manager. Um, it could be some other type of, of input, but essentially it's... Um, it's set up to to a change. So um, the simplest up, uh, simplest example of this would definitely be a mic live or mic on and off, and that could be coming from a um, uh, from a hardware event via a uh, interface card for an analog mixing desk, or for some digital consoles like the AQ Capital and Forum. Um, it could just uh, be uh, all done in the IP realm. Um, all of this goes through the broadcast radio hardware service. So essentially all of the devices that the broadcast radio hardware service um, support are supported in SmartSign 2 as well. Textiles allow you to just simply uh, uh, put a piece of text onto your smart sign. You can control the text uh, size, font, and colors. Time as words. Uh, this allows you to display the time in a way that is useful if you are reading it directly off air. So um, uh, the time might be uh, 2.28, but uh, that's not much useful if you're on air, whereas time as words would display that as nearly or coming up to half past two. So it uses a variety of different natural sounding phrases to describe the time at this moment. Twitter followers very simply display displays how many um, followers there are on the account information that you've put in so you can see in real time how many people are following your station on Twitter. Similarly, uh, Twitter latest tweets allows you to um, to display the latest tweets from an account so you can monitor a, monitor um, important uh, Twitter accounts, your own account, um, celebrity accounts, news, whatever you want to. And finally, the YouTube uh, tile allows you to display a YouTube video or a YouTube live stream, um, which can be useful for obviously uh, if you have a video you want to be repeated or that is up on, on YouTube. Um, you can also use this to connect to some of the live services, like for example, um, Sky News provides uh, Sky News uh, live feed on YouTube and you could put the address into the YouTube uh, tile and that would allow you to actually display Sky News um, live on your smart sign. 
So you choose the tile you want to do. So let's say we wanted to put in a something simple like an image tile. So let's just double click on uh, images. Uh, so here you can see it's put an image tile in there, but it's not very useful where it is there. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to move this digital clocks, these two digital clocks up. I'm going to move my image down here and I'm going to uh, increase the width and increase the height. So that's fine, but I also need to tell it which image to display. So let's go uh, double click on it to bring up the uh, things. Now, every tile has some common elements to it. So they have a header and they have an appearance block and they have a footer. So you can have a, a header, which is just basically a banner at the top. And then inside there, you can then choose the text, the the fonts, the size, the colors, etc. And that will then just be displayed on top at the top of this uh, this tile. Uh, similarly with the footers, exactly the same. And most tiles also have an appearance which allows you to choose whether it's a, a rectangle, an ellipse or a circle, choose the background color and also the radius. And then for each tile, this sort of middle section here has the individual information that is uh, used for that tile. So in the case of an images tile, we can choose whether or not to use a single image or a folder full of Im images and then browse to that folder. But let's choose a single image. So I click on the browse button and I go to my, um, let's go to my pictures here. And let's say we wanna take a picture of my dog and put that on. So let's put that there. Um, and then if we click on back, we finish on this tile now, you can see the images tile is there. But if I click on the go button, that will then relaunch it. And there you can see we've added a picture of Poppy to uh, our smart sign. So let's take a look at some of the other elements we've got here. And then we'll add a couple more elements in. And then we'll finish off by looking at a few of the settings. So let's go back to our layout. Um, let's have a look at the big digital clock. So let's have a look at this one. Again, you can see that in this particular case, we're using the header to display the region that is, so UK, and we're choosing the clock face. Um, the, we set the clock face colors, the, the times, the ticks around the outside. Um, crucially as well, we can also set the time zone. And that's how we've done the different time zones on that particular example. So if I double click on this one, you can see this one is set to Abu Dhabi and it's set to um, Arabian Standard Time, which is the, the correct offset time for that region. So you can, it's quite easy to add them in. Let's say, however, we want to change this one rather than be a, um, uh, a digital clock. Let's say we want an analog clock. So let's remove that tile. Are you sure you want to remove it? You can also press delete. Add in a new tile, and this time I want to use an analog clock. And again, I want to fill up the space, so I'm just going to go on that, double click on it, and here you can see, same thing, uh, I need to change the heading on this one, so um, I think it was Sydney. Okay, and I could also choose the colours if I want to. So let's say I did want to to make the, the, the clock face a different color. Oh, I've changed the numerals and didn't mean to do that. Let's change the clock face to be a different color. And we could also change the, the hands, the minute hands, the second hands, set the, 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 the time zone. So, so Australian central time. I'm not sure if that's right for Sydney, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and uh, we can also, if you wish to, on this, you can actually display uh, a, um, uh, an image here. Now, these images are the ones that are in the camera roll. So if you want to copy your logo into here, you would have to uh, put, the, your, put it into the camera roll. So, uh, but this is going to be a very small clock, so let's not have a display on it. Hit back, and you can see it go. And you can see now we've got our, our clock there. However, I didn't change the background color of the header, so which is why it's green. So maybe I'd go back and uh, go back into my header here and, and change the background to be black and the foreground to be white. Um, of course, it's entirely up to you. You don't have to have your your um, smart signs in black like uh, this example, and you can change the overall background color uh, as well. 
Let's take a look at some of the settings to see how you might change that background color and also how the hardware service is configured, how many um, grids are, how many columns and rows there are, and a few other things such as adding your license. You need to go back into the layout editor and then click on the settings button on the left hand side. Here you can see the top section allows you to control the background color, how many rows and columns, and also the margin, which is the space between each one of those rows and columns. This is where you set up, the certain experts where you set up the um, broadcast radio hardware interface. Because most of the hard work for the hardware interface is done using the broadcast radio hardware service, all we have to do on the smart signs is give it the um, host IP address or name and also choose the device that you wish to use. Uh, in this video, we're going to be using the virtual network device so that we can switch things on and off using the hardware monitor. Um, some of the tiles allow you to have audio output. The media tiles and the um, uh, YouTube tile require that. So you can choose the output device there. And in here is where you add in um, your uh, your uh, licensing. So if currently you see we're on evaluation, but if you did choose to uh, buy uh, smart sign to then you can do so online uh, you'll be emailed a new license code you click on change you paste your license code into there hit load and then your product will be licensed and there's a couple of advanced settings about um, diagnostics and also um, adding a password so people can't um, edit the settings without uh, putting in the password um, so that's the, the an overview of the settings. Now, what I actually want to do is actually set up a, a completely new um, smart sign from scratch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do delete all tiles. And it'll ask me if I'm absolutely sure. Obviously, I wouldn't say that if I was, but I'm going to click on there. So now when I click on the back button, you can see instead of having um, all my uh, uh, preset tiles now, I've got a blank canvas to work on. So let's build a very quick smart sign from scratch. And you can see how we can use some of the more advanced tiles to create something very effective very quickly. The first thing you probably want to add is some type of clock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off at the top here by adding in a, um, a tile called time as words. So I'm going to make that uh, too high and I'm going to make it uh, probably about that wide. Looks good. And I'm going to go into that and I'm going to change the font here to be 60. Okay, so let's um, click on go. We can see uh, we can see out there. We can see actually coming up from five minutes past four, it's probably a little bit big, um, but it is running over two columns, so it's probably okay. Next thing I want to do is add in an, a, a digital clock. So I'm going to move, put the digital clock in place, and um, I'm going to create that to be around about that. What I'm actually going to do is I'll make, uh, make this one just a little, no. I'll leave it as is. Uh, so this is our digital clock, but our digital clock probably, we probably want that square, so uh, we can do that. Um, probably don't need to change too much on the digital clock. If you look at the settings for that, you can see the, 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 the settings are by default. Of course, you can change them and ch change your time zone as well. Uh, next thing I want to do is add in a RSS feed. So I'm going to go down and do uh, RSS feed and I'm gonna make this one um, that wide and that high so now I've got an RSS feed that's the same width as my time as words and um, we need to obviously go off and uh, and get that RSS feed so just double click on it and in here is where you'll put the URL now you can get this URL from um, just doing a Google search um, uh, just put that in there. Also, you can choose the type of uh, casting, the scroll type. I'm going to do teletype because I prefer that personally and um, whether or not to have the tile image or the uh, headline image. So if I click on back and hit go, we can see there's our, our um, RSS feed coming in there. However, it's probably the text is a little bit small. So what I'm going to do is make that uh, wider and make the text 60 to match the time is words. Okay, so that's the first thing. Next thing we might want is a date. So let's put a date up here and I'm going to put a date time into there. And again, I'm going to make it wider and taller. 
and I need to put the format in. Now, this is um, if you click on this button here, it tells you the different ways you could do it. It's all a bit nerdy. This you have to type in a sort of weird script to get it what you want. But you can see here I've got D D D D, so that's full name of the week, M M M M capitals, which is full month of uh, name of the month, and then uh, space, and then a D, which is the date one through thirty one, and then the year. So that's going to display a full um, a full date. Change my text size back go you can see I've got my date in there okay so we're getting somewhere now uh, let's see what else we might want to add into here um, we could add in uh, an image we could add in um, now playing information media that type of thing but I think what we really need to do is add in a smart display so we're going to add in a new smart display and we're going to make this one just a, a little bit wider um, and then we're going to, to double click on it and we're going to call this one uh, mic one and in its off state I want it to be a dark red and I'm going to change my font uh, my text to to be um, a kind of gray I guess something like that and I'm going to make the, the font about 40 and that's um, that's all I, could, I need to do for that. I could, if I wanted to, put a uh, put a image or something on there, but I'll just keep it really simple, just saying it's mic one at the moment. Now, that's its off state, and then we can add a new state here. So we click on Add Line, and we choose um, from our hardware service. We can choose our, we've set one up for mic one, and I'm going to call this one uh, mic one live, and I'm going to change the um, the the text and the background to be bright white uh, bright red sorry and the text to be a bright white and um, also match the font size which I think I put it as forty yeah did so there you go so now that's that's um, set up there so uh, what will happen now is if I click on uh, go you can see uh, the the font it, it's uh, in its off state at the moment and if I was to bring in the, uh, the wrong one is bring in the um, hardware monitor if I turn on mic one you can see it switches to um, the on state and it's not quite right because I've got my alignments wrong on my off state so I need to go into there oh, it's actually because I've got a display uh, image on here and then the text placement to the right so if I untick display image that should correct the fault there you can see it's in there and then if I bring turn it on you can see it changes so here you can see how easy it is to set up a series of, of smart tiles uh, smart display tiles um, now obviously I might have more than one microphone so let's instead let's um, make this one um, one uh, wide one thing uh, less wide and I'm gonna copy it and I can then uh, paste it in there and paste another one in there um, so you can see now I've got copies of those so I might just go in and change that one to be mic 2 and um, in here I want to change the the pin it's responding to to be mic 2 and obviously change my text as well and then repeat the final thing for, for mic 3 So now you can see that we have three mics and if I bring up the um, uh, the hardware monitor I can s simulate these turning on and off. And in fact you can add multiple different states to these as well. So um, it might be that you have two or three different pieces of hardware. So for example if you were doing a sign that actually didn't have a lot of space for these um, mics you may have it so that when uh, mic one is on it just says mic one when mic two is on it goes a different color and when mic three is on so you could do it that way if you wanted to um, because you can have uh, multiple as many pins as you want on each smart display tile okay so this is looking quite good getting where I want to be um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move these all over and give myself a little bit of spacing. And then uh, the final thing I want to add in here, I think, for this tile is um, let's add in something really clever and add in a, a YouTube tile. And um, with a YouTube tile, basically you can uh, point it at a YouTube um, video or a YouTube channel and it will play that. So let's, uh, let's put that in there and let's go off and add in a, a YouTube video ID. You just need the um, actual video ID. So uh, just the unique uh, string of characters that YouTube puts in there. So I've put that in. This is actually the one for um, Sky News live feed. You can also choose whether the audio should uh, be played through the selected sound device or muted. Uh, I'll select muted now because this is going in a studio. So hit back, hit go, see what that looks like. And there you can see uh, Sky News is, is now playing on the smart sign. Um, after a couple of seconds, uh, like all YouTube videos, it, if you've got the bandwidth, it will clear up. So it starts off... Um, a little bit blocky and then then gets better as, as it buffers um so that's pretty much our smart sign done um you can see how we might add other things like we might have had some different um clocks or anything else but um you can see how very you can very quickly get to a point where your smart sign is doing what you want it to do uh, and looking reasonably uh, nice you can see the the interaction with the with the smart um, display panels as well and you can imagine um, how you would uh, create your unique smart sign based on this so i hope you've enjoyed this video um, feel free to download the latest smart sign 2 from our website and run an evaluation uh, license so that you can actually have a play with it yourself uh, and remember, if you want uh, multiple licenses, uh, you can contact us um, because whilst you can buy them individually from our website, um, there are better deals to be had if you have, if you need multiple uh, studio clocks or multiple licenses, then um, contact sales at hello at broadcastradio.com uh, and we'll be able to put together a package for you to suit your needs. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time uh, with the next video from Broadcast Radio.